today we will discuss an important uh, topic from mahabharata <clears throat> in today's world we have a very limited understanding about justice or what is right so what we do we see the action or life of a person and we immediately jump into so many conclusions we make conclusions and we start accusing and treating that person simply based on our observation but mahabharata or vedic literatures like ramayana puranas vedas and upanishads they give a very different dimension of justice justice based on multi lives our present day of understanding is the justice based on only one life this life so because of which many things appear unfair to us sometimes you see people escape from any punishment sometimes those who are doing wrong appear to enjoy the life sometimes government or the court is not able to convict people people are able to evade and escape so we see all kinds of things happening so people have kind of lost their faith in the idea of justice but the vedic scripture give us very sound understanding of justice so when you study carefully the life and activities of personalities in in scriptures like mahabharata ramayana we see how this happens very carefully and systematically justice is not simply based on our action alone in the court or even in the scripture justice is given keeping three aspects in the mind intention of the person action of the person consequences of the action of the person intention action and the consequences so today we will discuss a very famous personality from mahabharata that is draupadi to understand the life of draupadi and her lifestyle and what was happening in mahabharata with draupadi we need to understand minimum four lifetime four janmas otherwise you will only misunderstand the personality like draupadi just see mahabharata gives four janmas explanation see how careful and responsible justice it is not you simply see draupadi and her life and jump into some conclusion and laugh at her and make some immature childish statements on this kind of great personalities to understand we have to go so much into history and that history is not just one life history unfortunately today because we have lost vedic education we end up thinking there is only one life we only have one life means we are body so once the body is finished everything is finished but the vedic culture vedic education is we are not this body we are soul and soul has no death there is death only for body so the soul keeps changing different bodies that is called janma are different lives so draupadi mahabharata talks about four janmas it says in mahabharata drupadaisha tato jagne suta te devarupini this suta the daughter of drupada drupadaisha tato jagne you should know that this daughter of drupada she is devarupini she is a goddess panchanam not one goddess panchanam there are five devatas devatas trees are goddesses panchanam sahita sahita means there are five people together 
in this one person drupadaisha tato jagne suta drupada suta the daughter of drupada jagne you must know devarupini panchanam sahita panchanam devata strees there are five goddesses krishna rupa krishna is the name of draupadi draupadi has got many names the name given to her at the time of her appearance is krishna krishna is pullinga means it is referring to masculine krishna is trilinga the krishna is given to ladies krishna is for gents so krishna rupa purvata purvata in the previous lives this krishna this draupadi she is called draupadi because she is daughter of drupada but her birth name is krishna means the most attractive and purest and she is also called yagna saini because she was born of yagna so panchanam sahita krishna roopa purvatya nindita she is she was actually uh, you know the devata pancha roopa means the five devata strees headed by parvatya nindita parvati mother parvati nindita they were cursed so this is what mahabharata is saying it's not draupadi is not one person there are five goddesses coming together as in one body previously they were cursed and who are these five personalities parvati wife of lord shiva shachi devi wife of indra shyamala wife of yama the you know you know yama dev right usha she is the wife of the twins who are they ashwini kumaras right and bharati devi saraswati devi so let us see there are two curses involved in this two curses two shapas so once what happened brahmanaiva brahmanaiva cha shaptaah sma purvam cha anyata leelaya this five ladies they were cursed by lord brahma brahmanaiva cha shaptaah shapta shapta means cursed brahmanaiva cha shaptaah sma purvam previously these people were cursed by lord brahma and why they were cursed ekadehatvam apyainam yada vanchaitam gataha they were trying to cheat or deceive lord brahma by all these people coming in one body they were trying to cheat lord brahma ekadehatvam what is the meaning of ekadehatvam in one body yada yada means when yada mi yada yada hi dharmasya whenever there is decline so yada refers to when when all those people came in one body yada ekadehatvam vanchaitvam vanchana you know vancha means deceive cheat so they came in one body to cheat lord brahma once at that time they were cursed by lord brahma what is that what did they do once mother parvati mother shachi devi mother shyamala and mother usha they planned a prank they wanted to play one prank their prank was they said let us all enter into one body okay and in that one body let us roam around in front of lord brahma and lord brahma will not be able to find out oh there are five people because we will be in one body and when when he will not be able to find out we will all laugh at his ignorance means basically you know how sometimes people try to uh, deceive and laugh at it oh you didn't come to know like that so this is the prank they wanted to play 
so what they did eka they this so they all came in one body and they were roaming around in front of lord brahma to deceive him to make fun of him so this is not correct actually lord brahma is in a very superior position he is in a very respectable position playing pranks with such superior respectable person is not appropriate for us to try to show him in a very uh, funny manner is not a proper behavior for anybody so that is why lord brahma gave them a curse ek deha manushyatvam apsyatha trisho uddhataha actually what they did they three times tried this how many times they tried to prank lord brahma three times two times lord brahma didn't take it seriously he just forgave them he thought okay after all you know uh, they just innocently they must be trying to innocently do this he tried to forgive them but third time lord brahma took it very seriously he thought that it will set a wrong precedence to others if i don't correct it others will follow them then uh, their wrong precedence will come so to in order to teach them a lesson lord brahma he gave a curse what is that curse that lord brahma gave eka deha manushyatvam eka deha manushyatvam all of you appear as a human in one body that's what you are trying to do with me right you all have come in one body see body according to bhagavad gita lord shri krishna is a vehicle yantra rupena you know krishna calls this body as yantra is like a machine like car you can have one driver and you can have many people sitting there and riding so many people ride in one body so this is one body generally one person for one body but in an extraordinary situations like this there can be multiple souls in one body ek deha manushyatvam manushyatva why manushyatva for devata strees coming down to a human form is actually degradation because manushya body has got many limitations like for example you are a you you are the owner of a car so in car you can have ac in car you can have uh, music in car you can travel uh, you know at faster speed now if i tell you 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 now travel on uh, cycle bicycle you see many features won't be there on the bicycle the speed of the bicycle is less than the car you won't get ac experience on bicycle so for devata stri the devata body is a superior body they've got so many superior features in that body and cursing them to take birth as a human is actually is a punishment so for playing mischievous uddhataha ek deha manushyatvam apsyata trisha uddhataha three times you people are trying to play pranks with me mischievously uddhataha means mischievous behavior so for, for that appear as appear in the human body and in one body in one human body eka deha manushyatvam right trisho three means three times so trisho madvanchana eta madvanchana you try to deceive me you try to fool me three times trisho trisho madvanchana eta iti tenodita vayam so three times you take birth three times you take birth in single body amongst the human so this is the curse given by lord brahma now let us now understand whatever we heard so what is the origin the mischievous behavior so we have to be careful how we are held accountable for our intention number one intention what was their intention their intention was to show lord brahma in a very 
demeaning manner he is a very very responsible superior respectable person he has a very respectable service to do in krishna's creation and trying to show him in a very demeaning manner is not acceptable so that is intention secondly their behavior trying to roam around brahma laughing at him try to cheat him so behavior so the punishment is given for intention and behavior even though there was no consequences consequence brahma did not get fooled there was no consequences but their intention and action the punishment was given so one has to be careful even though you are devata sthris that doesn't mean i can behave however i want you will be held accountable for your actions this we have to keep in our mind right so you came to deceive me three times so three times take birth as human being and you came to deceive me in one body so you all appear in one body so this was the origin of this and there was a second curse this is the first curse of lord brahma why they appeared as human being in one body there is another curse of lord brahma what is that purvam humacha deva devastya kadachit bhartru bhiryata previously in front of lord brahma these goddesses parvati shachi devi usha shyamala bhartru with their husband they were in a inappropriate manner they were behaving in front of lord brahma vilasam darshayayam vilasam darshayayam they were displaying inappropriate behavior with their husband in front of lord brahma brahmana pashyotadikam more than what they can behave more than what they are supposed to show they were displaying more than that see their etiquettes are very important so in front of whom what we can do not that we can do whatever we want in front of whomever we want we cannot like for example if you go to court and you laugh in front of uh, just uh, you know uh, judge you will be punished for that you can say oh do, don't i have uh, uh, freedom to laugh crack some jokes yeah you can definitely crack some jokes you can laugh not in front of judge in the court there is a certain etiquette to be maintained right so there is certain etiquette to be maintained in front of lord brahma he is in the topmost position in order to administer this world it's very serious post so in order to set things right and when these uh, goddesses vila vilasam pradarshayitam they were displaying certain inappropriate behavior bhartru bhiryam with their husbands so uh, lord brahma cursed to these goddesses that you are inappropriately behaving in front of me so you will get the parapurusha sparsha you will your punishment is other man will touch you see in the vedic culture getting touched by another man is a punishment touch we are not talking about more than touch even just getting touched is considered to be a punishment is considered to be degradation look at this kaliyuga culture and civilization what to speak of other person's touch no one even think that it is there is something wrong with this the purity of the vedic culture is that a woman she maintains so much of purity purity is the foundation of love for both man and woman it is not just for women even for man and for women both touching another man or a woman is considered as impurity is considered as degradation you are exclusively for one person kaya vacha manasa mentally 
ma you know verbally and physically you can never ever come in contact with another person so this brahma scars that you will be touched by another person was actually a curse and that's the reason in the fourth janma the draupadi vastra paharana happened that she was touched by dushyasana because brahma had cursed so now you all understood there are two curses once all these goddesses in order to play pranks with lord brahma they thought we will all enter into one body roam around in front of him and brahma will not be able to detect it so then we will laugh at his ignorance his in inability so for that brahma uh, you know curse them three times you came to fool me so three times you will be born as human being and you all came three times in one body so you will three times appear in one body and in another occasion they were inappropriately behaving in front of lord brahma with their husbands so lord brahma cursed them that you will you will have the uh, you know touch of another man for devata sthris it is actually a very big insult it's a very big humiliation because you are getting touch with another person right this is the background this is background now mahabharata gives the four janmas because now there are four janmas three janmas where you will be born in one body for uh, fooling brahma and one more curse is you have to come in contact with another man right in the first life all this five uh, sthris devata sthris appeared as viprakanya viprakanya means daughter of a brahmana and they they didn't get a suitable husband so what happened they all performed severe austerity to lord shiva to please lord shiva to get suitable husband now you understand if you go from the concept of justice why they are not getting suitable husband why are they not getting suitable husband see now if you simply see one life you will see why is that these people are not getting suitable husband but you have to see from their previous actions so they did so much of tapasya and lord shiva became very pleased with their tapasya and appeared to them and he blessed them in future janma you will get husband you will get suitable husband and in future janma you will get so the viprakanya the daughter of the brahmana viprakanya only one the one uh, you know body in that one body there are all this devata sthris and so they gave up their life because lord shiva said in future life you will get your husband so in the second life the viprakanya appeared as the daughter of nala maharaj and damayanti nala maharaj and damayanti and her name was nalayani nalayani means the daughter of nala like lord rama is called dasharatha krishna is called vasudeva son of vasudeva vasudeva son of dasharatha dasharatha daughter of nala nalayani and in the next life the third life she appeared as indrasena a woman called indrasena and she was married to uh, one of the sage called mudgala mudgala rishi and mudgala rishi once he made fun of lord brahma oh lord brahma he is not a great person he became lusty after his daughter and he chased after her and he made fun of him thinking that i am better than lord brahma i didn't do this so out of the superiority ego he made fun of lord brahma and lord brahma became angry at his behavior and cursed him and cursed him that you are you know talking that i got degraded oh brahma was degraded because he ran after his daughter so i curse you that you also degrade by associating with higher qualified woman so mudgala rishi 
was making fun of Brahma, saying that you associated with a woman who is less qualified than you by running after her and she is your daughter. And you Brahma degraded. So Brahma got angry and cursed that you will also degrade by associating with higher women. Now, here is one interesting point. It appears like Lord Brahma is such a great person. Why should he become angry when somebody makes fun of him? He should just ignore it, no? Why should he take it seriously? Why should he curse back? It appears like behaving like an ordinary person. Or somebody makes fun of you. So you also become angry. You also, you know, scold them back. Show your angry back. We have to very carefully understand this. What is Brahma's position? Brahma's position in this uh, universe is a very superior, responsible, respectable position. It is exactly like Chief Justice of India. Chief, he is a topmost. Above him there is no judge. He is a final judge. If any punishment has to be given, Chief Justice of India will be the final person to decide it. And now if somebody makes fun of him, contempt of the court, who else will give punishment? Who else will teach that how to behave properly? He himself has to do that. So when Lord Brahma gave curse to Mudgala or to this Panchakanya, it is not that he was offended. It's not that he personally got offended. No, he was actually teaching an important lesson how to carefully behave with superiors. Not lose behavior. Oh, this is what I think and that's what I'll speak and that's what I'll laugh at it. No, you have to have grave behavior. You have to have gravity in your speech, in your thought and in your action. So Lord Brahma, not out of personally getting offended, he is becoming angry. He also has a responsibility to set the right standard. He also has a responsibility to teach people what is the right way of behaving. So that is the reason he gave curse to Mudgala. And that has become clear in the next one. What happened? Mudgala realized his mistake. Oh, I should have not done like this. You know, when sometimes, when the... Uh, punishment is given, we all learn lesson. So when Brahma gave punishment, that's when Mudgala realized, I should have not done this mistake. He realized his mistake. And he did lot of tapasya to please Lord Brahma. To, you know, make him uh, happy so that now Brahma will tell him how. Because Mudgala realized it will be such a big degradation for me to associate and desire the higher women's. Now you may say, what's wrong? How associating with higher qualified people can degrade us? If you are not careful. It is like a drunkard makes friendship with some sober man. Okay, you, you make relationship with sober man. Now as a drunkard consciousness, what will you offer? Alcohol, you will call him, come let's go and drink. Oh, I have some bottle, do you like to drink? So, you can commit offenses if you are not careful. So, when there is a mismatch of consciousness, the Vedic culture always recommend all of us that you make relationship with similar consciousness. But, take guidance, take instruction, associate from this perspective means taking instruction, taking guidance, always from higher consciousness person. But to have a relationship which gives you enjoyment, for that you should have relationship with your consciousness, similar consciousness. So uh, marriage, out of the marriage, so you cannot marry, a man cannot marry a woman who is more qualified, not out of ego. It is not out of ego. It is consciousness mismatch. You will not know how to behave with that woman. If she is more qualified than you in terms of her spiritual consciousness development and you misbehave with her, that means trying to uh, engage that woman for a, uh, you know, some uh, 
spiritually demeaning activities then it is not the right responsibility of a man so some in today uh, this is totally misunderstood so they say oh man should be superior in all the aspects they say Ma the man's age should be more than woman's age man's salary should be more than woman's salary the man's uh, uh, look should be better than woman's look actually this is all misunderstood what should be more than man's so what sorry what should be more than woman's your consciousness should be more than a woman consciousness it is not necessary that you should be earning more than women it is not necessary your age should be more than women it is not necessary that your position should be more than women's position oh i am a ceo my husband sometime people say why are you educating your daughter so much it will become very difficult to find a husband who is more qualified than the woman why the man should be more qualified than women man should be earning more than women man should look uh, better than women man should have more age than women that is not the understanding what is the understanding man's consciousness should be more spiritually developed than woman consciousness because man is the guru in the family he has to he has a role of a guru he is a role of a teacher so that he can guide his wife and children so for this you need to have better advanced consciousness than your wife so if you have a lesser consciousness than a woman with whom you are marrying then what happens you will not know how to deal with that woman so you will misuse her and for misusing a woman you will be punished and which is degradation so brahma pun, uh, had given punishment to mudgala that you will associate with higher qualified than uh, you this uh, parvati shyamala usha and you know uh, shachi and that will make you degrade because you told me that i have degraded so you will also degrade like this so then when mudgala realized it he begged forgiveness he did uh, austerities to pre please lord brahma and lord brahma forgave mudgala and he also gave a remedy see this incident shows that lord brahma was only interested to teach mudgala of the right behavior to make him realize his mistake not that he was carrying some grudge not that he was keeping some anger or oh, you personally humiliated me you personally insulted me that was not the reason why brahma cursed mudgala brahma cursed mudgala to punish him to set the right standard when once the mudgala realized his mistake and begging forgiveness and now brahma forgave him and then he told don't worry you will not associate with those devatastris through your body their own husbands will associate so mudgala rishi in mahabharata it explains that he appear he appeared as though he has he uh, he has got leprosy disease in that way he never associated with indra sena who is indra sena the lady indra sena she is a in indra sena body there are five devatas threes parvati bharati shachi shyamala usha you see now mudgala rishi cannot associate with her even though he is married her but he he cannot have any relationship because that will degrade him so and mudgala was aware of this so he presented himself as if he has got leprosy disease and never associated with his wife indra sena and when indra sena uh, but he gave the reason i want to test the pativrata how my wife she is so committed and dedicated to me because i am a leprosy affected person so i will never be able to have any relationship with my wife so let's see whether she'll be loyal and committed to me and when indra sena demonstrated her loyalty and commitment to mudgala rishi by not desiring any other man then the this other uh, the the uh, real husbands of this devata stris they expanded through the mudgala rishi in the five separate bodies and associated with indra sena and it appeared as though mudgala rishi expanded himself into five forms and enjoyed with indra sena 
and after this incident once that curse was nullified now what was a curse that mudgal has to associate the devata stris now that their own husbands came and associated in the form and in the through the mudgala rishi then that is over now mudgala rishi quickly because he knows it is not safe for him to be with indra sena he renounced the world he left the indra sena and went off now indra sena the where the five devata stris are residing they became very disturbed they want association of their husband so they again performed the severe austerity to please lord shiva now we are discussing the third life first life is viprakanya life in which they they didn't get a suitable husband because they're all devata stris they couldn't marry any ordinary people so they they did tapasya to lord shiva and lord shiva blessed them that you will get suitable husband in the future janmas in the second life they appeared as a daughter of nala and damayanti as nalayani and there also they didn't marry and in the third life appeared as indra sena and married to mudgala rishi because there is a reason why this marriage happened because there is a reason mudgala was cursed what was his curse that you will associate with a higher qualified woman and degrade but again mudgala realized his mistakes so brahma gave one uh, you know upashapa how to escape from this so indra sena enjoyed with their own husbands right and in the fourth janma all this devata stris appeared as draupadi panchali or yagnasaini and in that janma shamala the wife of uh, lord yama married yudhishthira who is yama and bharati devi saraswati uh, devi married vayu bhima and shachi devi married indra is arjuna and usha who is the wife of ashwini kumaras married nakula and sahadeva except for parvati devi why parvati didn't get a husband in that janma because there was another story that lord shiva was cursed and that we will discuss separately but now this is the story of draupadi that vyasa deva reveals to maharaj drupad why she has to marry five pandavas because marrying five men is unacceptable in the normal course of action and how can those who follow dharma religious principle will allow one woman to marry five men it appears like prostitution it appears like injustice it appears forbidden activity to understand this one has to understand so many previous janmas starting from brahma's curse and now you understand why draupadi married five husband and because they were all the you know staying in one body and at the time of marriage vyasadeva made one arrangement that one man will be with draupadi one of the husbands will be with draupadi for one year at that time no one else will associate with her so when that one husband is with draupadi at that time one of the devata stris there are five devata stris right so one of the devata stris let's say yudhishthira maharaj is with draupadi now so during that one year shamala devi will live with her husband when bhima is with draupadi bharati devi will live with her husband when um, arjuna is with draupadi shachi devi will live with her husband indra when nakula and sahadeva are with draupadi for each year usha devi who is their uh, eternal consort will live with in this way there was no transgression of dharma and what did vyasa deva say at the time of draupadi's marriage he said that after every year she will attain her virginity again because she has to so what does it mean means she is not polluted it's not that the same woman associating with so many men she will again uh, attain her virginity the second woman will means the next devata stri will live with her husband 
So there was no injustice to anyone. Just see this one character called Draupadi. Mahabharata gives the analysis of four janmas. So what do we learn from all these things? Number one, how we have to be careful in our thoughts, intention, in our action and in consequences. Because these Devatas trees had intention of playing mischievous prank with Lord Brahma, they were cursed to you know, appear like this. And now one may ask this question, why do these Devatas trees behave like this? Or any Devatas behave like this? Not just women, even men also can behave as if and they are getting cursed. Two reasons. One is misuse of their free will. They can behave like this. Secondly, Martyavataram Martya Shikshanam. What is that? Martyavataram Martya Shikshana. Martya means taking birth in this Mrityu Loka, in this earthly planet. So why do they appear in this earthly planet? For Martya Shikshana. Shikshana means for educating people of this material world. So Devatas, apart from their universal administration, they also have one more responsibility. What is their one more responsibility? Keep setting right examples to human beings. Keep giving them right education. So, Martya Shikshana. So, and when they do this for Martya Shikshana, at that time it is called Leela, pastime. It is not that they are obliged to do this. It is Leela. So, with like Parvati Devi, Shamala Devi, all of these people getting cursed by Lord Brahma can be understood in two perspectives. Martya Avataram, Martya Shikshanam, to set right example how human being should not play mischievous uh, pranks and make fun of superiors, how respectfully you should behave with superiors, what will happen if you behave like that, to set this right example. And one should also be careful not to misuse their position, they have to be careful about mis not to misuse their freedom, free will. So to set these two examples, this Devata Stris performed this Leela with Lord Brahma and Lord Brahma cursed them. As a result of that, they had to appear in so many Janmas and the final Janma was Draupadi. And in the Draupadi Janma, each of the Devata Stri got to be with their own husband and what is that? You will have the touch of the other man. That happened during Vastrapaharana. Otherwise, a personality like Draupadi can never go through that kind of a humiliating situation. How can such a great woman have such a powerful husband? And they are helplessly sitting. They are not able to stop this. And once Lord Brahma's curse is over, Lord Krishna immediately came and protected with the devotion. Why Lord Krishna came and protected? It's not that Krishna has to come and protect. That was not the part of Lord Brahma's curse. But during all these things, they offered their pure devotion to Lord Krishna. Prayed to Lord Krishna, for which Krishna came and protected. So Dushyasana could not touch Draupadi. He couldn't touch. Because now you offered prayers to Lord Shri Krishna. And that transcended your Brahma Shapa. And Lord Krishna came and protected and saved from the degradation. Because the moment you come in contact with other man, touch of other man, your consciousness will pollute. It's a, it's a punishment. So Lord Krishna came and protected those Devatastris from further degradation. He didn't touch her. Didn't touch. So, this is the, uh, you know, Draupadi's Janma Vrittanta. You understand? So, the coming back to the point, how careful we should be to understand the idea of justice. What is right, what is wrong. If it, 
if you don't understand from all perspectives your so called idea of right and wrong will be immature and imperfect how can five men associate with one woman that will be imperfect if you don't get all this background and vyasadeva in mahabharata is giving all this background so that we learn this we train ourselves don't conclude don't judge anybody simply seeing their action what is going on in front of you right now there will be so much of background when you go to any psychiatrist and psychologist no they also more or less give you same thing but they don't tell you that look at their past life they say that look at their past not past life past they say why somebody has become like this they'll say see his childhood see his upbringing what must have happened there why because of that this person must be behaving like that so vyasadeva is much better than this modern psychologist and psychiatrist he says don't see just only what happened in the past 10 years 15 years in their childhood you should also see what has happened in their previous janma because in vedic culture atma there is no death only body dies so we have to understand justice from multi life perspective otherwise it appears greatly injustice so with this we'll stop here grantara shrimad bhagavad gita ki jagat guru shri la prabhupad ki nitai gaur premanande